World Europa presents Calling Europe, the first pan-European speed podcast. Welcome everyone to a new episode of our pan-European speed podcast Calling Europe. This is the country edition and we have two guests from the Czech Republic today. It's Adam Hanka and Magdalena Hucicova. Did I pronounce that right, Magda? Uh, almost almost close. Uh, it's a Hucicova. <laughs> All right, thank you. And Adam is country lead of uh, Czechia, of full Czechia, and Magda is a volunteer who's been there since about September. So the podcast is going to be divided in three parts. The first one is the profile with the quick questions. The second one are the three questions. And then at the end, we have the song choice. Are you ready, Adam and Magda? Go for it. All right, let's go. So let's jump straight into the profile. The profile. When was your country team first established? It was around two years ago when we started to uh, have the first volunteers. And now we've been growing ever since and we're still establishing the institution behind it. So we have a country team, but uh, we will be registering an NGO and then creating the political party within, I hope, the next year. How many members does it count and how many city teams are you active in? So far, we have 25 members uh, on paper, but only around 15 are active in, in Vault in Czech Republic. And the biggest base is currently in Prague, but we are trying to spread also to the second largest city, which is Brno. What was your last election and when was it? Yeah, that's a, that's a funny part because we didn't have one yet. And um, so we were thinking about running in the last regional elections, but then it would have been a bit too expensive and we didn't have that many people ready. So we just decided we'll be postponing till the next opportunity. What is your next election and when will it be? Well. The next election for Czech Republic is a par parliamentary election next year. And we are considering uh, tr trying to run for, th for this election. However, we'll see how it will go according to how big the vault in Czech Republic will get. So it's still not, not completely sure. All right. Well, now let's move on to the next part with the three questions where we can take a little bit more time to meet you and your country team a little bit better. The three questions. Question number one. How long have you both been with Volt and what did you do before? Well, I've joined in this September with, with my friend <laughs> whom I've met through AFS. So be before joining in and uh, I was volunteer. Uh, actually, I still am a volunteer with AFS, American Field Service, an organization that organizes uh, student uh, exchange programs for studying high school abroad. And like so far, I'm also a pro U university student. So that's what I've been doing before and I, and what I'm still doing apart from being a new member of Vault. All right. Thank you. And Adam? Well, I've been off the university for a couple of years. I'm working as a computer scientist, uh, mainly working with data analytics and uh, programming. Apart from that, I, I was also involved in, in international NGOs. And then, you know, after some time, like 15 years working in NGOs, I, I, I thought, well, let's take the next step. And then I stumbled over Bolt. It was really interesting, got, got my attention. And I thought, okay, I've been used to working with volunteers and now is the chance to actually put that on the next level. So I started to uh, build up the Volt chapter in, in Prague. So that's my short history of joining Volt. And what is your team mainly made up of? Is it, or is it, is it rather students or is it rather working people? I get a feeling that it's mostly working people with, with these couple exceptions of students from both high school and university. But um, I would say that Adam probably has a better scope of this. <laughs> this, is, this is a really good question now. Uh, now that I think of it, I realized that Magda just joined in when we were starting to be in lockdown. So she has read of most of the people in Slack or workplace communication, but she probably didn't sit with most of them face to face. So yay, welcome to the age of Corona. Uh, she's been working with us or volunteering with us for two months and she only met a couple of people in person. But you're Magda Tola, right? It is mostly people who are working older. Some of them have already kids. So I always had a feeling that Vault is an organization of university students 
And that was slightly different here in Czechia because we started as, I always say, four bearded guys over 30. And then, of course, diversity is important. It lies deep in our hearts. So we started to go into different communities, uh, break different bubbles and, and, and try to pull in people like university students, like women. So I know that we're slowly succeeding in this. We're also growing younger as an organization, while Volt in many European countries is actually growing older by breaking bubbles. Question number two. What do you like most about Volt, Magda? For me, uh, yeah, it is a great, like, let's say, opportunity to help and make change here in the Czech Republic, because so far there haven't been any, let's say, pro-future movements. I've always felt that the Czech political scene is pretty much uh, in stagnation and as long as no, no new ideas were coming by then Volt sounded like a great option because it's trying to tackle the current issues which most of the Czech political parties are omitting or not really really reacting to. What is your take on that question Adam? I, I very much agree with Magda. Volt is like myself. It is pro-European, it is pan-European It's got a lot of people in a lot of different countries. It brings people together. I liked it a lot. And it's an aspect that I'm missing in the Czech politics. And I think this is this is why we also have a great chance to actually eventually succeed. But why it is also very difficult to build it up at the beginning, because people are just not used to this way of doing politics. So how do you think this compares with your other neighbors in the region? So, of course, you have Germany on one side, but you have Austria and Poland on the other side. In what sense do you think you can compare with that as Volchekia, which is pretty central in, in the middle of all these countries where other Volt national chapters also exist? I think um, Czech Republic has um, quite a long tradition of having democracy. It was there for 20 years, um, like between 1918 and, and uh, the World War II. And um, then, of course, it turned into a communist country and, and we lost a lot of that feeling in, in this regard. Um, Czechia is quite close to East Germany, former East Germany. And, and Poland, Hungary, so we share a lot of common history. Um, however, as you might have noticed, there is a vault in Czechia, which is working quite well. There is a vault in Poland, which is working quite well. It is not working so well in Slovakia, and um, Hungary is also just building up and, and based on a very small team. I think they have a long path ahead of themselves. So wh wh why this is happening? It might be just chances. It, it might be... Um, that we were lucky we had a couple of people at, at, at the beginning who came from the US and who lived in, in, in West Europe and they already came with this feeling, hey, we need to build up Volt. Um, but what is also a big advantage for us is the Czech Republic is a country and especially Prague is a city in which people who study here also want to live here. So uh, if you have a look at Slovakia, a lot of people have just left the country. And the same actually happens with Hungary and, and recently also with Poland, while living in Czechia is, is a great choice. And we have a lot of Polish people living in Prague. We have a lot of Slovak people living in Prague. And then, of course, building up Volt is much easier over here than over in Bratislava, because when I, when I last talked to the Slovakian team, they just told me, hey, we have like six members and none of them lives in Bratislava. So, you know, this is also our big advantage that we're somewhere like halfway through between the east and, and the west of Europe. So do you think that Volt will have big difficulties in the future to um, maybe reach all of these uh, more local parts of population, these less international uh, parts of society? I think yes. And this is this is also very much connected to the notion of globalization, right? So um, Volt is full of people who are very global, They are aware of differences and they, they even seek variety, like what, when Magda was talking about her participation in a NGO that works with exchange students. This is one of the greatest examples. So she's the one who has actually been working with diversity a lot and, and she's learned a lot from that. Um, however, not everyone is uh, uh, even, dare say, privileged enough to have this kind of opportunity. And then, of course, bringing this kind of international environment, especially if you haven't learned English, 
uh, or if you don't speak English on, on a great level because you just come from a regional high school where you didn't have the chances to, to, to learn the language, then, then thriving in the international community is difficult and will have a lot of glass ceilings to break there for people. It is not impossible, though, not impossible, but it will be very difficult. And I also see that as one of our main objectives in politics. If we want to do it well, it, we, we don't do it for ourselves. I definitely agree. And uh, especially if you look at national chapters like uh, Italy or Germany, where we have uh, several thousands of volunteers, we have quite a part. And uh, as myself, as a, uh, a part of the European reporter team, um, one of the issues we have is a language barrier, uh, being able to only uh, uh, communicate to people who really speak English. And we always have to take into account that if you want to reach the other ones, uh, we have to uh, in short translation. So I think it's a challenge, definitely. I think it's also uh, tied surely to the size of the respective country teams. But what is your take on that, Magda? What do you think um, the difficulties are in Czechia? Do you think that is a problem that is which is maybe rather local to this part of Europe? Or do you think it is a pattern that might follow us through everywhere in Europe? For me, I think the problem that Euro Czechia, as Adam said, is pretty much, I would say, concerning the Czech people a lot. Because at least the way I see it, a lot of Czech people are not really trusting. And it takes time before you earn their trust and they believe that like something new is really worth it and can and be beneficial. Which, is, from my point of view, is what Volt will be facing because it's a new thing. It's a new way of thinking, which many people here are not used to. And giving these people this new option, they first will probably be really wary about these new, let's say, innovative ways of thinking or doing politics or whatever. So it will take them some time before they so somehow grew used to the, the idea of this and before they grasp there are some benefits that could come from, like, looking at the things this new way yeah. question number three what is your objective until 2024 our next eu parliament elections i have to admit that i haven't really thought about this in terms of vault yet um one of the reasons is that the team is not so large and we will have to see what happens so i have a personal objective and the personal objective is that a team that we have is as strong as possible and that we're able to reach out to a lot of people on social media, raise the awareness of the ideas about Vault. So, you know, just bring Vault to as many people as possible. There are so many things that I know that we'll have to be doing and we haven't even touched the surface, like a friend of mine, uh, for example, fundraising. Fundraising is something that we know European teams are doing, but we're basically fundraising on terms of I'm paying 12 euro for flyers and so, so fundraising is, is me fundraising the money in my own pocket now and um, we'll have to go public and I think this is going to be the first breaking point in which we'll see if we're actually reaching out to possible donors, if we're reaching out to a broader public which might still be inside of our um, let's say pro-European bubble and like I said before and, and Magda actually followed up on that pretty well, we will have to see if we're able to reach out to a different audience than is our peers, our classmates, our um, that uh, basically the, the bubble that we live in. So you know that based on social media and this theory that everyone lives in a in an echo chamber, and then you just shout something and it comes back because this is exactly how social media work. And we will have to see if what we're offering to the society, what what we're putting into the public, is something that a broader audience is um, is resonating. Right. And do you have any first ideas of how you could reach that in the following years? Sure. Like I said before, um, first we will found the NGO, so it will become, you know, an organization. Then we will come up with a transparent account and then we'll start reaching to, uh, to donors. And separately, we'll be also creating the political party. For this, we need to collect signatures. It is not so many. It is just a thousand signatures. So I think it will it will go pretty fast. 
But we have been postponing it. And one of the reasons was that once you create a party, you're able to gain media attention. So we're actually saving this effect of the media attention. Hey, a new party was created or maybe the world already has an established party as a political party here, here in Czechia. We want to use it for media leverage. And once we have that, uh, I hope that that will be the next step in the direction of putting our ideas uh, to a broader public audience. And I wish you lots of success with that. Thank you. I'm pretty sure you will be able to uh, achieve all of these goals just like the other national chapters and of course with their support too. So let's move on to the last part of our podcast which is the song choice. Your favorite song. You get to choose two songs. So what songs do you choose? I have to say I leave the choice to Magda. She's much better at music than me. Okay, then two songs for you, Magda. <laughs> okay, so my music choice, at least for for me, it's no, not it's not really that popular, but for me, it's Ezra Furman, My Zero. And if I get also the second choice, then uh, a German band called Bukahara and their song Happy from their new music album, Canaries and Goldmine. All right. Thank you very much, Magda and Adam, for being part of this episode today. Thank you also to all of our listeners. You can find our podcasts on Spotify, on YouTube, Google Podcasts and Apple Podcasts. In our next episode, we will be talking with uh, the Finnish, uh, some Finnish volunteers and see you next time. Ahoy. Thank you and ahoy. That was Calling Europe, a production of Volta Lorba.